Welcome back to How This Broadway Dresser Irons a Shirt, video three. And no, I will not be ironing a shirt in this video. I'm just gonna keep running my mouth because I'm still waiting to replace my iron that uh, the cord shorted out. And she's dead, as I wanted to go make videos about ironing. Uh, I can't complain, it had a great life. I'm gonna say it's at least 20 years old and it had a very good life. But speaking of a short in the cord, here's a story. A million years ago at Disney's Beauty and the Beast, we had a sewing machine and uh, the cord to the foot pedal had a short in it. So they called in a repair man to, re to repair the cord. What he did was he cut out about a foot of cord. So now the machine and the cord and, and the foot pedal worked. The problem was he had, you had to put the sewing machine on the very edge of a table with the cord dangling down, the foot pedal still not reaching the floor, you had to put a big dictionary under it and kind of jack your foot up to like operate the... And of course, I spent a month saying, I said there's a short in the cord, not short in the cord. Very expensive show, Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Crap, I used to call our sewing equipment the Easy Bake Oven of sewing machines. Mm. Uh, and we had ironing boards that were getting busted up and janky from overuse and bent and crazy and the cover doesn't stay on this one anymore. And when Les Mis closed down the block from Beauty and the Beast, they had a big dumpster outside and containing things like ironing boards they threw out. And we went to our supervisor and said, can we please dumpster dive and steal their ironing boards? Because the ones that they're throwing out seem to be a lot better than the ones that we're using on this hit Broadway show. She told us we couldn't dumpster dive. Anyway. So let's talk about equipment uh, until we get uh, a new iron. Let's start with the ironing board. Now, this particular ironing board shape that we are all very accustomed to, the whole, you know, it looks like a surfboard with the curved end up here. This ironing board, since it's Women's History Month and a continuation of Black History Month, let's talk about Sarah Boone. Sarah Boone was the woman that came up with this design. Uh, she was a formerly enslaved woman who ended up being a dressmaker up in Connecticut. And she came up with this design and was one of the first black women in America to have a patent. And it is on this shape of an ironing board back in, I think it was 1892. So cheers to Sarah Boone and thanks for the ironing board. Now, as far as the shape of the ironing board goes, I rarely use the curved end of the ironing board. Um, I am left-handed, so if all this seems backwards to you, well, tough titty, flip your camera, I'm looking at this in a mirror. Um, I was told, and I, I'm not going to go into the I'm sorry, not Siri. Look it up for yourself. I was told the curved end of the board was best and designed to be used when you were steaming a bonnet. Well, since the bonnet went out of style the year before I was born, I can't confirm or deny. But I will say that only on certain occasions, like if I have a shirt that something like this, say, that doesn't button up the front, I can't pull it open and throw it over the other end. I might have to work it onto the smaller end of the board here. That's fine. If I have really small things, here's another big tool for you. This is a pressing sleeve. This is a brilliant tool because if I have something like a shirt sleeve that I want to do, I can take it uh, from the shoulder, okay, and I can feed the entire sleeve up the arm of this pressing sleeve so that I can work on the sleeve itself and flip the sleeve because say it's a show where the design is that the shirts cannot have a crease down the seam. We discussed this. I might have to use this to keep rolling the sleeve over and pressing and pressing. Uh, the shirt sleeve is also a really good tool when you're doing repairs. If you're the stitcher on the show, you might have to get a piece of the garment up close where you can work on it or steam it out and you have just so much garment that you might be able to just get that area wrestled up in a place where you can isolate it and work with it. So, yay pressing sleeve. Uh, when it comes to the ironing board and this the, the curved end, the other way that I've used the curved end is um, on the show Mary Stewart, which is about Mary Queen of Scots, who eventually ends up getting beheaded, uh, not on stage, but she uh, historically wore a red gown to her beheading so that the blood wouldn't show. I mean, she's fashion forward and she's got the sass going to the guillotine. Bless your heart. Well, not the guillotine, I guess it was chopping block. Either way, red dress, bloody head. Uh, when that show played on Broadway starring Janet McTeer, if you don't know who she is, look her up. She's brilliant. You've seen her in things. Janet is astounding and that performance was astounding and I got to day work one day a week prepping clothes on that show. Sidebar, Janet is similar in height to me. I 
had a hard time not trying on that red satin, uh, red taffeta dress. I am going to say that I've tried on many leading ladies' dresses. As some of you who case the backgrounds of my videos might have noticed, we're gonna get to it one day. I have a pinata that looks like me wearing a Carlotta from Phantom costume, because that's what it is, a pinata of. I'll tell you one day about that. Uh, the day that I did try on that Carlotta's particular dress at Phantom and took pictures and then showed her the pictures of me wearing her dress, she said to me, you fit into my dress? And I said, we had to take it in a little. You can still see the slap mark if you look real close. Um, anyways, comedy. Uh, so anyways, doing day work on Mary Stewart. Now, people remember, when we put up quick change booths, when they put them up for us in shows, it's the minimum amount of space they can get away with to put everything into because every show needs more space than it's got for the most part. Um, so when the theater is taken over by this particular show, every department is kind of gently elbowing. Well, props needs to put things over here. Well, the set needs to roll over here. Well, we need a place to change people. We need a booth here. Well, wigs needs to put their stuff over here when they come up to do a wig change. So everyone's negotiating. So we end up with these little quick change booths or as, as big as we can get and they're pipe and drape mostly which is if you've been to convention centers every booth is that metal pipes with just drapes hanging in them pipe and drape so we've closed off an area that's a private quick change now in a lot of situations not everyone's going to fit in the quick change at the same time to change which means the ladies will end up in the quick change and the guys will be on folding chairs just outside of the quick chains in the wings as one guy i know says the ladies are in there taking their clothes off we're over here ass out in the wings not, not, not true. Uh, and that is even if we have quick changes in, in the, on the deck level. We may be out in the hallway or in the stairwell or in the basement or in all of these places doing changes. So anyway, Mary Stewart, very small quick change booth on deck. Now, during the day to come in to do the day work, since everything is turned off, we can get the work lights in the backstage turned on. So it's just very high above us, big white light. Uh, it's not a lot of light in the wing and nothing but shadows coming into this booth. The booth itself probably has, I remember it had at least a couple of racks of costumes and it's small. So by the time I put the ironing board in the middle of the booth, I'm negotiating around the sides of the, the room. And there's a lot of clip lights just stuffed up in areas to kind of light. And some of them had blue gels on them because the blue, we need, we, like, we do a blue light backstage for the most part during a show. So trying to see the clothes, to prep the clothes, to go over every seam in the clothes in this gloomy light in the middle of this small booth was challenging. And that ball gown, that big uh, red taffeta number, oh my God. I would use the point about this video, Billy. It cuts seven and a half minutes we're talking. Uh, the point was about this curved end. I would hang the gown uh, on this end over here, leave it on its hanger, and get section by section of fabric onto this board to iron her, flip her around, iron her, flip her around. Uh, it would take me at least 45 minutes to iron that particular gown. And I loved it, and it looked great when I got done. And I'm gonna say, I know from the supervisor of that show that Janet McTeer herself has said that on the days that I would do the day work, the gown looked the best. So anyways, um, I would love to do ironing, but meanwhile, my iron is still broken. Let me see if I can do some magic and fix that. Three, two, one. Look at that, a brand new Rowenta iron. I like Rowenta. They're not the cheapest, but they're sturdy. I also, I need an iron that has the features where you can like, I like to make steam, that's the noise. I like to make steam shoot out. Also having the feature to be able to spray something. I will say that when I iron most shirts, it's easier when they're damp. So being able to really super steam, I know people that will keep a spray bottle and spray, 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 iron, iron, iron. I don't like to have to pick, Spray, 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 put that down, pick up the iron, 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 put that down, pick up the steam. I, I wanna be able to just like shoot, shoot, shoot steam all over it while I'm going. So I've got a brand new Rowenta that I'm gonna work with. Um, I know a lot of shows will use a Black & Decker iron. It's, it's a lot cheaper, I'll say, but to me a Black & Decker iron is basically a hot brick. Um, it doesn't have the, the bells and whistles of being able to shoot steam out of it and stuff. It just, yes, it gets hot. Yes, it makes its own steam, but you can't control how much you're shooting out more steam at a time. So I prefer a Rowenta or something like that. So I'm going to see how my new Rowenta does in the very next video, where I promise you in video four, I will actually iron the shirt. Last thing I'm going to say about equipment and irons 
is uh, you will get deposits and rust in there after a time, so it's good to clean out your iron with vinegar, dump vinegar in and steam it out like crazy. Just let it all drip out. Because what will inevitably happen, and you won't know when it's going to happen, and especially with the Black & Decker, you are ironing the Phantom of the Opera's very white, crisp tuxedo shirt, and you go like this, and <laughs> rusty water spits out all over the front of the shirt. Right there, right there rusty water to launder that out to get that out near impossible so to get the deposits out of the iron with with um vinegar uh more often than not is a good idea okay now this is a 75 minute video where i've done nothing about ironing you people feel duped i am sorry i hope you're fascinated by my brother stories and god can i talk fast i promise you in the next video i will iron okay bye